welcome to this Foundation Stones at Home virtual workshop. Thank you for choosing to take part in this activity as part of your personal commemoration for Yom HaShoah today. As we're all taking part in this activity together, we would love for you to tweet a picture of yourself or your stones while you're taking part. If you use the hashtag Foundation Stones at Home, your contribution will show up alongside others who are taking part today. We'll be sharing these on our social media accounts, so do keep an eye out. Firstly, to introduce myself, I'm Lottie and I'm here on behalf of Big Ideas. We are a community engagement organisation and we're working in partnership with the UK Holocaust Memorial Foundation to deliver Foundation Stones. Foundation Stones is a unique project which asks each and every one of us to paint a stone in commemoration of the six million Jewish men, women and children who were murdered in the Holocaust. These stones, painted up and down the country, will represent a commitment from our communities to learn from the past and build a future free from all forms of discrimination and hatred. The special thing about these stones is they will actually become part of the new National Memorial. Here is an artist's representation of what the UK Holocaust Memorial and Learning Centre will look like once it has been built. It is here that your stones will end up, asking the public of today, tomorrow and every day after that to remember our past. What you choose to paint on your stone is entirely up to you. It's an individual response. The powerful thing about them is that no two stones are the same. They are all unique. Each has its own message, its own voice and story. Before we start painting today, we're going to talk about a particular piece of British history. Alongside Yom HaShoah, this month we also mark the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Bergen-Belsen on the 15th of April 1945. From the British forces who liberated the camp, the relief workers and volunteers who saved lives, to the survivors who made the UK their home, it is our story to remember. To learn a little bit more about this, we're going to hear from David Bernstein at the Red Cross. He has a strong connection to Bergen-Belsen. British Red Cross teams provided life-saving relief to survivors of Bergen-Belsen after it was liberated by the British and Canadian forces and David's uncle was in the army and acted as a translator at Bergen-Belsen shortly after liberation. I'm making this contribution both as chair of the British Red Cross and also as a nephew of somebody who was involved in the liberation of the Belsen concentration camp. He was my uncle Joseph, known as Joe, and he had a very active war. He, he served in North Africa. Later on in the war, was involved in crossing the Channel, where he fought across Europe, arriving at Belsen not long after the liberation. The British Red Cross played a major part in this liberation. On the 21st of April, 1945, six teams of British Red Cross personnel together with 97 medical students arrived to provide relief and help treat the prisoners who were in the most horrific state. And, and these uh, staff and volunteers for the British Red Cross, they did everything necessary. They worked uh, obviously to help on the medical side, but they worked as drivers, they helped with orphaned children, they showed tremendous humanity to people who were virtually at the end of the road. I have painted the word humanity. And the reason that I put humanity onto the stone is this is a guiding principle of the Red Cross movement. It defines the spirit of those who served at the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. This stone, my stone, with thousands of others from across the UK, will be helped to lay the foundations of the UK Holocaust Memorial and Learning Centre. I strongly encourage everyone across the UK, whatever their background, to be part of this, to paint a foundation stone to remember the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp 75 years ago. That was a really personal tribute there, which can make for a really powerful stone. So thank you, David, for his amazing contribution. 
Now, for those of you who don't already have a stone and decorating materials in front of you, you now have five minutes to run to your garden or outside space to go and find one. You'll also need to grab anything you wish to decorate your stone. This might be pens or paints or maybe even nail varnishes. We'll show you some videos of people who have already taken part while you collect your materials. We're going to hear from some people around the country who have already taken part in the project starting with Alice Greenwald from the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, who's going to show you a beautiful series of stones we received in the post last year. Hello, my name is Alice Greenwald and I'm here in New York City. I was sent pictures of five painted stones that were um, painted by a woman in a care home in Winchester. The images she chose to put on these five stones um, included two butterflies, two stones with feathers, and one stone with a lovely painted floral wreath. All of these images speak about transformation, and, and I think about how apt um, a symbol that is at this moment when we are approaching on the 15th of April the liberation of Bergen-Belsen. And in the process of being liberated, these individuals were not only given the possibility of their lives back, they were given their health back eventually, but most importantly, they were given their dignity back as human beings. And dignity to me is at the essence of freedom. So I can't think of more appropriate images to speak of the power of transformation, um, and in this case, transformation through liberation as we observe the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Bergen-Belsen. To commemorate the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, I painted a foundation stone, a project of the UK Holocaust Memorial Foundation, this side of my stone was painted red, representing the death and destruction wrought at that camp. And I've put the initials LS in memory of Leos Stein, one of those murdered in the camp. The other side of my stone I painted blue, representing the sky that is above all of us, of all backgrounds and nationalities and ethnicities and faiths, so that together we can all join to commemorate this significant anniversary. So why don't you also paint your own foundation stone as your memorial to those who were murdered in the camp and throughout the episodes of the Holocaust. Foundation Stones is a project to paint a stone that will go into the actual foundations of the new UK Holocaust Memorial when it's built. The boys behind me are painting them. They've just learned about Bella Gutman and they're looking at the story of football and the Holocaust and remembering them that way. In the Jewish tradition, you place a stone or a pebble on a grave to show that you've remembered. And people all over the country are painting stones now. Uh, to go into the Holocaust Memorial when it's built. Painting stones for uh, Judaism in uh, the war, where many people have died. And we've had uh, lessons about it, and especially about the great manager. My book's called The Greatest Comeback. It's a biography of uh, Bella Gutman, who's a uh, great football coach. He won the European Cup twice with Benfica in the early 1960s. What makes this story incredible, he was also a Holocaust survivor whose uh, family was murdered. I was talking to the Academy Boys about, about Bella Gutman, about the story uh, of his life, and using that really as a vehicle to speak to the boys about the Holocaust, what happened to the Jews of Europe during the war. The Bella Gutman story engages them about the Holocaust in a way that they previously haven't been. I've learned um, how Bella Gutman has powered through discrimination during the Holocaust to become one of the greatest managers alive. David's told them about Bella Gutman's story and the amazing thing about Bella is that he survived and that gives you a sense of hope. Uh, we're actually going to be painting stones for the uh, players from his club, Hakoa, who didn't survive. 
This is the stone of like trust and um, Bella's team that he had for the uh, football. For football in particular, when we've had these recent incidents of racism in football, where the England football team left the pitch for a certain amount of time only a couple of weeks ago against Bulgaria. This theme of racism has really come to the fore in football and it's very important that children, these young footballers, learn the environment they're growing up in so they know how to deal with it. It helps us to think what's happened in the past and how, how it can help us during the lifetime. Well, my stone has a Quaker star on it and uh, it's a very rudimentary illustration of a Quaker star but the, the Quaker star really matters a lot to Quakers who've given service over the years. It was originally used uh, in 1870 uh, in the Franco-Prussian War but it would have been used for the relief workers who went in six days after the British Army to Bergen-Belsen and they would have had badges or insignia saying that they were Quaker relief workers. And those who worked particularly after World War II spoke very, very warmly of the efforts that they made to bring humanity back to what they saw as an inhuman situation. So the Quaker star doesn't just mean service and relief, it means a new way of looking at things and a new introduction. The work that I've done with the Holocaust Memorial Foundation has been the most humbling and thought-provoking of my life. So my stone says, never forget. I will never forget the first time I had the privilege of meeting a British Holocaust survivor and of hearing her story. And I will never forget that dawning realisation, not only that that could be any one of us as a victim, but also that a whole society turned in on itself during the Holocaust. And we must all never forget what happened. We must teach our children and our grandchildren and the generation still to come so that we never forget. Hopefully everyone has been able to find a stone that fits in the palm of your hand and some materials. As we said, this can really be anything, paint, pens, nail varnishes, whatever you've got at home. If you weren't able to find a stone, please feel free to draw your design onto a piece of paper. You can always transfer this onto an actual stone at a later date once we're able to go outside. There's plenty of time to take part. I should say now that I'm personally not much of an artist, but that doesn't matter here. The main thing is the message of the stones. If you don't possess artistic abilities, like me, you may prefer to write on your stone or to draw a symbol. It can be as detailed or as simple as you like. The most important thing to think about is the message on your stone. Perhaps you'd like to commemorate a particular person, write a message of hope, or draw an image of something that is meaningful to you. This is my stone. Um, a member of my family came to England on the kinder transport and her family affectionately call her Little Mouse. So that's what I've decided to represent on my stone. Don't forget to use the hashtag Foundation Stones at Home to share your stones online. We'd love for you to tweet a picture of you with your stones or you painting your stones. Now, while you get started, I'm going to show you a slideshow of images of stones. We have been sent from groups and individuals all over the UK. I hope these will provide you with some inspiration in case you're still unsure of what you might like to paint on your stone.
hope everyone is getting on okay. I can't wait to see what you're all painting. Don't forget, if you use the hashtag foundationstones at home, your contribution will show up alongside others who are taking part today. Now, if you haven't finished decorating yet, please don't worry. You can carry on with your stone after the session finishes. Here are some foundation stones that we have already received. Thank you so much for taking part in Foundation Stones at Home. We're going to ask you to hold on to your stone for now, then once it's possible to send it by post or to drop it off at your local hub, it will make its way to becoming part of the memorial. In the meantime, please add your stones to our digital map. This is an online community of stones from all across the country and even further afield. Simply head to our website for more information, www.big-ideas.org forward slash foundation dash stones dash map. If you would like to receive any further support, resources, or spread the word about the project, please visit our website or email foundationstones at big-ideas.org.